Hey everybody, this is Roberto Blake of RobertoBlake.com and today I'm going to show you how to create a YouTube thumbnail using Adobe Photoshop and the basic tools. And I'm going to do it by creating the thumbnail for this particular video. So let's go ahead and open up a new file in Photoshop. Uh, for YouTube thumbnails we're going to make this 920 by 1080 some people will try and make these 1280 by 720 I prefer to just go 920 by 1080 full HD resolution just because it's the best representation of a YouTube thumbnail in any situation so that's what I always go with so we're gonna just hit create here so this is your basic whiteboard and canvas for working in Adobe Photoshop one of the first things you'll probably want to do is release the background layer you're gonna hold down alt and just double click and that will release the background layer we can go ahead and still name this background that just makes things convenient we probably won't worry about this uh, too much in terms of what we're gonna do now for a lot of you creating a border in your artwork is gonna help your YouTube thumbnail stand out so that's the first thing we're going to do and we need to make that a layer that will stand on top of all the other layers so the quick way that I do it is I create a new layer and I just go down to the panel I click on that I usually just go ahead and fill it with black you can use any color you want and then what I do is I use the effects panel and you can just go down here to effects go to stroke and you're gonna pick a color in this case I'm going to pick a blue color I'll probably adjust this a little bit later and instead of one pixel I'm gonna set this to 16 pixels you'll notice that I have it set for the inside if you have it set by outside which is default it won't show up so we're just gonna put it for the inside here and that should be enough you can use 16 or you can go with 20 I just usually go with 16 so we're gonna click OK now this layer is above everything else what I want to do is I want to do two things I want to take the fill down to zero which leaves us with the border because the fill doesn't affect the effects layer there the opacity would and you can see that that just gets rid of everything so you're going to want to go ahead and just put the fill down to zero instead and once you've done that we're gonna lock this layer so that we don't affect it in any way so now we can't touch that layer it's done all right, so that's going to give you that border that sits above everything. The next thing we need is we need some kind of background for this. I'm just going to go ahead and make a gray background for now just to be able to fill in text and assets because what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, just paste a background that I've already chosen for this, which is going to be the Photoshop user interface itself so I'm just gonna paste that in as my background and so you can see that that's what I have going on here and I do want it to um, fill up all of this here and I'm going to go ahead and just move this below that border because I want that to be the top layer here and this is all going to make sense in a little bit in terms of what I'm doing so I've got that if I want to go ahead and I want to make that just less prominent I can reduce the opacity and I haven't decided whether or not I'm going to commit to that or not another thing I could do is I could mess with the blend modes here I could put this on soft light or I could put this on multiply there's just different things I can do I need to see how this is gonna look with the other things that I want to do in Photoshop and in other tutorials I will show you how to do other things like cut yourself out of a background I've actually done a ton of Photoshop tutorials if you want to beef up your Photoshop skills I'm just gonna show you how I more or less do the YouTube channel thumbnails that you're used to seeing me make So next thing I'm gonna do is I have a character that I use uh, you guys have seen it before it's a mini Roberto character that I had made for me by Joshua Pomeroy of Pomeroy creative and I use that with a lot of other different assets so some of my assets come from graphic stock and Adobe stock I'm gonna to link to a lot of the different resources that I use for just making artwork here so you can use all the same things as me and if you want to you can go ahead and get those um, I'm going to go ahead and take my custom character and then I'm gonna drag him here so now I can position him wherever I want 
and you can kind of see what I'm going for. Now I brought him in and I'm going to just go ahead and commit to this at full size right now so that I can show you that this is a smart object and when you make something into a smart object you can resize it small or big and it'll remain uh, with the same resolution and image quality so that's actually a good thing here uh, so what I want to do is I think that this is the size that I want and this is the positioning that I think I want I just have to kind of decide here and what I'm going for in this case is I can go with a couple of different options I can put them over here and I know that right around this area is where the YouTube is going to put the timestamp and so I'd made it just big enough to where it wouldn't block the create something awesome on the t-shirt and I could just put the text over here and I think that's the direction that I might go with this but I could always go the other way and I could always you know put them over here and then I could put the text on the right hand side so it's kind of an either or thing um, in this case I just think for visual balance I'm going to put him um, over here and that that's going to look good and then I'm going to create my text I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use a, a font called Bebis new and if you use um, Adobe you'll have access to this but I also think you can get it as a free download as well but I use Adobe type kit and that gives me access to this font so I'm just gonna go ahead and make my uh, title now Alright, so that actually doesn't look too bad. Um, there are adjustments that I want to make to this. I think I want to bring this over just a little bit and then I want to lock it up just a little bit differently. I think that looks good. One of the things I want to do is I want to try to match the blue in here to the Photoshop logo. So I'm going to unlock the border here. I'm going to click on the stroke and then I'm going to use the eyedropper to just kind of select that blue and now it all matches in terms of the branding so I think that that actually looks pretty good so I'm just gonna lock this again and now there are a couple of things I can do if I think that this needs to be a little bit darker just to help uh, all of this stand off what I can do is I can switch over to black here and I can go ahead and just use the paint bucket tool and fill that with black and then I can just go ahead and reduce the opacity so that we can still see what's going on there and then I could play with the blending mode I could switch it to something like overlay and see if that helps or multiply uh, usually you could do it with normal but sometimes this just helps the effect a little bit just depends on what you want to do with the blend modes I kind of want us to still be able to see that this is the Photoshop interface I just don't want it to uh, make things hard to read but if I feel like it's you know fine like this and we can at least tell that it's Photoshop then here's another option in terms of how I can make this text a little bit more visible And you guys have seen me do this in thumbnails before so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the shape tool I'm gonna make sure that it has a stroke on it here and we're gonna just set the stroke to six as a hard even number and what I can do is I can make a rectangular box that stretches out like this and I can just make sure that sits on the layer behind my little guy and behind the text and you can see that that helps this whole thing stand out a little bit more I don't have to leave it black though I can make this more interesting I can double click and I can choose either this color or I can choose this color just to kind of you know have it match a little bit um, I think that this helps add a little something to it I like that and I'm gonna reduce the fill I'm going to reduce the fill to maybe something like I don't know 50 60 percent just something to where I can still keep some of that color and to where we can still see through it and it just makes the whole thing feel a bit more dynamic it makes it pop um, but again I'm not sure how much I like that I might need to change the color I might need to adjust this so I can uh, this might fit a little bit better with our whole Photoshop thing just giving it a darker blue even if it doesn't match up all the way I think that actually 
doesn't look too bad. So now we have our basic thumbnail. There are just a few finishing touches that I want to add to this that can really help it a little bit. So what I'm going to do in this case is um, I have a color fill here and by setting this to an opacity of about 35, let's actually make that 30. I think that's actually a little better at 30. Actually, I'll tell you what, let's make it 40. By setting that 40, I'm giving that a little bit of a color treatment. I've changed the blend mode from normal to color, and so that gives that a color wash. And so by turning it down from 100% here, where you know that would just have the whole thing looking just a little bit too blue, I moved it down to about 40%. You know, 50 might be okay. So you just kind of have to play with this and see what you want. We'll settle at 45. And so that actually looks um, pretty good here. I kind of want a subheading here. I've already typed it out in um, a brush font. And so that is simple tutorial with an exclamation point. And this is just using a brush script. That should be a font that you have in Photoshop with Adobe uh, type kit. Um, if not, I'm sure you can find a brush style font on the internet. One of the websites that I use is dafont.com. I also use my fonts and font squirrel. And so I do kind of like uh, that. I might position this slightly differently because I do kind of like it uh, dipping in to this here. So maybe that's something that we do because that just makes it slightly more dynamic, makes it interesting. Um, and so, yeah. The other thing is I have some vector shapes. You can get these from graphic stock. Um, I've got a little arrow here that points and I think I have another one around here. Nope, that's not the one. Here it is. So these little things just kind of help a little bit with eye direction and just draw more attention to this title. And again, I can do some tweaking and I can position them if I think that things are just like, you know, a little too on the nose or something like that. I think this is probably fine. One of the other things I've done is I know that this area is where uh, you know YouTube likes to put text in the end card and down here is where YouTube likes to use for the timestamp. So I just kind of positioned all of my stuff with that in mind. So sometimes you'll want to do that. If you really want to be fancy, you could like take a screenshot of a YouTube thumbnail and see where the end card and where the text is and you could just make uh, borders but usually something around here is probably accurate and so I like to try to put my text more in the middle now to avoid YouTube kind of overrunning it with those different things so that's just how I'm doing my thumbnails nowadays and um, I will do other types of thumbnails I'll do thumbnails where maybe I cut myself out of the background I've already done tutorials on how to do this in Photoshop so you definitely want to check out my Photoshop tutorials playlist. Those videos are a bit old, but most of the Photoshop tools remain the same. So uh, those will still work the way that I've done them. And you can go ahead and check those out. They're here on the YouTube channel. Also, I will probably do more videos like this. I'll probably do a video on how to make YouTube channel artwork. Uh, I'll probably do some on how to make banner ads and uh, Twitter and Facebook headers, if that's something you guys are interested in. So if you guys want to see more tutorials from me using different software, let me know in the comment section what software do you want me to do tutorials on is it more Adobe stuff is it something else uh, do you guys want me to show you how to do this same kind of thing using Canva or some other type of image editing software Photoshop's not what you have anyway like this video if you like it don't forget to subscribe check out the other awesome stuff on the channel as always you guys thanks so very much for watching and don't forget create something awesome today take care